One, two, three, four. And look what will happen when we will exceed the items in the list. We will have a stop iteration error. What's going on guys, Big Brace channel. This is Amir with you. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be. Um, this video is about iterators in Python. Now, I've created this video um, three years ago. You can see here it has uh, 326 views. I don't know why, right? And let's go ahead and talk a little bit about um, iterators in general. What are iterators and the concept of looping in general? So um, looping is a fundamental aspect of programming in general, right? But especially evident in Python, um, when you're really provided with numerous methods to iterate efficiently. So you can have a list, a tuple, a string even, right? Any type of data you can loop over. Um, the idea is how, how this is performed. So I believe that iteration is crucial for any Python programmer to understand fully. So that's what I'm going to try to do in this video. All right, let me just maximize this. Let's do it like that. Uh, let's go to Python. In Python, anything that can be looped over in a for loop is considered an iterable. Okay, um, let me show you a quick example before we go deep. So let's say, for instance, you have a list of fruits. So you see here, type that fruit is list, class list. Cool. Uh, we can do fruits with index zero. That's going to be apple, index one. It's going to be banana and so on. Now, if I want to iterate over that list, I can say for i in fruits, if I can type today, and I want to print the i, right? That's going to loop over that list and print apple, banana, grape, peach. But actually, how did this happen? You know, there are a lot of abstraction uh, just kept away from you in the process. It's more complicated than that. It, what happens behind the curtains, you don't see it, right? Uh, through different different under methods. And I'm going to explain that in a minute. Let me just exit Python. And let's get inside Python again. Now to understand what just happened, you need to understand iterables. So in Python, anything that can be looped over in a for loop, as I said, considered to be iterable. That includes, as I told you, lists, dictionaries, tuples, However, not everything can be uh, can be iterable, right? Like integers, for example, you need to construct um, integer. If you will do, for instance, for i in whatever, print, you will have an error, right? Because int object is not iterable. You need to construct that yourself. Let's say, for instance, that num is equal to whatever. Um, I can say iter num. For instance, that's going to be equal to int d for d in that number. But that number, I need to convert it to string. So num like that. And let's shut this, right? So we're going to iterate over the num, but we're going to change it to a string. And we're going to make that an integer, that d, that iterable we convert it to an integer and assign it to a new variable called iterNum. Now, if you will iterate over, if you will say for x in iterNum, I want to print that x, you're going to get 213155. But it's just what we have written in the num here. Uh, hold on, let me just uh, take a look. That num here that you have created, 213.15.131, you have actually uh, printed all of it. We have iterated through. But by default, as, as we said here, we have, uh, we have an error because int object is not iterable. Right? So just I wanted to make this clear for you. Now, of course, you can read about iterators in Python. So an iterable object is an object that implements iter, that's a dunder method called iter, which is expected to return an iterator object. 
don't worry if that sounds gibberish i'm going to explain that in code so you will understand better but we will need first to read an iterator object implements a method called next under um, uh, double underscore next double underscore okay this iterator is expected to return the next element of the iterable object that returned it and to raise a stop iteration exception when no more elements you know uh, are to be found or are available let me show you by an example by the way the iter and next method they were um, introduced in python version 2 the old version of python for those of you who were coding in python for a long time they know that they before uh, well actually with so there was version 2 and version 3 and the code was not compatible so there were some programmers programming on uh, python 2 2.1 2.2 i believe the last one was uh, 2.7 and then it's it has stopped no one it's just uh, guido van rassam said okay guys we're not going to work with uh, version 2 anymore we're going to continue with 3 now we have version 3.10, the latest. These methods actually existed in Python version 2.2. Um, that was in December 2001, by the way. All right, so that was a um, quick history lesson. Um, but let me show you if I want to do um, to create a numbers list that's going to take um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, that's a numbers list. Now I'm going to create an iterator. That iterator is equal to numbers dot that special method called iter. Okay, underscore, underscore, iter, underscore, underscore, and call it. So we have actually saved that in the iterator variable. I can print and I'm going to print the iterator and I'm going to do dot underscore underscore next underscore underscore and look what will happen one two three four eight nine ten and look what will happen when we will exceed the items in the list we will have a stop iteration error so that explains a lot now we have created this here the iter we took the numbers list and we accessed the iter method to be an iterable object. This iterable object is called iterator. And then we are, you know, iterating one by one by calling the next method. And if we exceed the items, we have a stop iteration error. Uh, let me show you another example. Let's take our fruits example. And again, I'm going to create that iterator variable. I'm going to do iter with fruits now, if you will do again type iterator, it will be a list iterator, right? Now, take a look at that. If you will do print next iterator, we'll have apple, banana, peach, error. Actually, you can iterate over one by one using that next method. Um, we can actually simulate the four loops manually. Uh, let me show you that. That's awesome. Let's do a list of animals, for example. Now I can do iterator. And that's going to be again iter for the animals. Now I can simulate that. So I can do while true. I'm going to just wrap this in a try except. Uh, oops. Uh, sorry, guys. While true try. I'm going to uh, create a variable called animal that animal is going to do the next or to apply the next method over the iterator and then i'm going to print the animal and accept stop iteration we can simply just break elephant sea lion beaver um, let me give you another example about um, iterable classes let me create collection class uh, that takes object here or whatever i'm going to have the dunder init takes self of course and here self dot items is equal to empty curly braces now i will have a different function that's going to add of course takes self first and we'll have a key and value and here i'm going to say self dot items 
uh, with the respective key, right? That's equal to value. Next, I will do the iter, the iter method and taking self and it's going to return iter taking self dot items dot items. Now, if you will do um, create an object by instantiating that collection class. So that's our collection. Now, if you will do collection dot add and you're going to add book, for instance, that's the, the key and the value is three. Also, let's have another one. Let's have collection dot add and we'll add pen four. Let's have another one collection dot add say copy book. Now I can iterate over key value in the collection. And I can print in a format string and I can print the key and the value, the respective value. If you'll do that, oops, we have an error. Oops, I forgot to. Oh, blimey. Okay. Uh, print. Okay, forgot that. So now we have book three, pen four, copy book five. That it, it has iterated over the key value pair. Um, we have done that very easily by creating a collection class. Actually, there is a, um, a simpler way to do it through an external module called iter tools. First, we need to import it. It's already embedded. You don't have to install anything. Let's have, for instance, colors. That's going to be a list of different colors. So let's say red, blue. Uh, let's have also sizes. What I want to do now is I want to can create a variable. This variable is going to um, list the iter tools have a method called product and the product is taking both lists. So colors and sizes for color and size in pairs. We can print actually F string uh, can do the color and size. Uh, oops, again, I don't know why every time I forget to shut the, the strings. And take a look at that. So we have here, we have actually iterated over by this product um, function or product method provided by iter tools that we have actually iterated over. So we got red, small, red, medium, red, large, blue, small, blue, medium, blue, large, and green, small, green, medium, green, large. And we have printed them here, right? So that's the product method provided by the iter tools. Okay, and we've passed inside, of course, the colors and sizes lists. All of that is cool and, and nice and everything. But for me, the most important thing for you to understand after you finish this, after watching this video, is that you understand that uh, iterators or iterable objects utilize two things, iter method and next method. The iter method transforms an object into an iterable object to which we can use the next method to iterate over a list of items. OK, uh, all of that is abstracted away from you. Again, it's all happening behind the curtains. You don't see that. But you need to understand that um, the iter and the next methods exist since uh, Python version 2.2. Yeah, this is simply um, iterables, guys. I hope this video was useful to you. If it was, please give a like, share the video with your friends, comment below. If you have any difficult concept for you to understand uh, in Python, please let me know in the comment section below and I will do my best creating this video for you. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.